Hey, good morning everyone. Dr. Shook here. Hope you're doing well today. Today I wanted to continue our discussion of food proteins. In particular, I want to talk about a protein in milk, and it's not casein, the one that you most commonly think of, and how it has similarities in its shape and structure that can confuse the immune system in a way that may cause the immune system to react against your nervous system tissue, in particular, the covering of your nerves called myelin. So of course, this is really important for anyone that might have multiple sclerosis or that has a neuroinflammatory condition, neurological autoimmunity. Those are all very important to consider. So the protein in dairy is called butyrophilin, and butyrophilin is a protein that's found in the fat globules of milk and dairy. And this, this uh, protein is the protein I was referring to earlier. It has the similarity or the homology in its shape and also the amino acids that build that protein. Those are the building blocks of proteins. The sequence of those is similar to that of myelin oligodendrocyte glycoproteins. Now, this is MOG, M-O-G for short, and this is found in the covering of the nerves. It's part of the myelin. In, in animal studies, they found that um, vaccinating them with a vaccine that caused the production of, of antibodies against butyrophilin did increase the neurological autoimmune reactivity against the myelin. So those antibodies were basically against the butyrophilin were sticking to the nervous system tissue of the myelin because of the similarity again in the protein structure because it looks similar. So the antibodies, the antibodies recognize proteins and things that are, uh, that are, it's trained against as foreign based on that shape and that protein sequence. So it couldn't tell them apart. It thought the, the butyrophilin, which it was reacting against, uh, was uh, that the nervous system tissue was the butyrophilin. So the antibodies stuck to it. So this doesn't mean that milk causes multiple sclerosis or neurological autoimmunity. But what it does tell us is that it can cause some immune system confusion. What, what we call that is cross-reactivity, where an antibody made for one thing might react to another. So this is just one more example of how the environmentally induced model of autoimmunity that I talk about is very important to look at and to use. You've got to look for the immunological triggers, which this is a food protein that definitely fits the bill. So if you need help with anything, check the link in the bio for free resources and telemedicine information. Hope you'll have a great day. Thanks.